guys, so I'm going to do a bit of meal prep for the freezer today and I thought I'd take you guys along and do a little video, show you what I'm doing. Um, so far the plan is, and I'll see how far I get through it all, uh, banana and chopped chip muffins, banana bread, chili con carne, sausage rolls, burgers and meatballs, all for the freezer. Um, probably some of the banana muffins will get eaten tonight and I might leave the burger, some burger patties out for dinner tonight. I don't know yet. We'll work that out as we go. Um, I have my ingredients out. My bananas are about to go not so nice. So there's them. Chili con carne. I have a tin of kidney beans, diced tomatoes. I have a kilo of pork mince and two kilos of beef mince. I have five big carrots to go in all of my mints to help bulk it up as well as onions to help bulk it up. Um, I have my puff pastry. I'm thinking about doing a lot of gluten free and then a lot of normal. I haven't decided yet but I'll put the puff pastry in the freezer in a minute because I'm probably not going to do the sausage rolls until a bit later. I'm going to get the stuff that needs to bake on so I can work on the other stuff and clean the Thermomix while it's baking. So yeah. Come along with me for the ride. We'll see how far we get through it all. I do have to do school run in a couple of hours, but until then, this is what I'm going to do today. All right, guys, let's do this. All right, to start, Thermomix on. We're going to fold, mash out the knife. to do a lot so let's get that done we still have more bananas in the fridge these are just the ones that set out on the counter and i also froze some for smoothies so this was always the plan what the kids didn't eat would get baked or frozen these are perfect banana bread bananas super super soft and not really any brown spots on them so that's good just turning my Thermomix on off screen. Letting it all get loaded up. That's one, two, three. That's four bananas. All right, so that'll be our first load. Put the rubbish in there. All right, so I'm just gonna select banana bread and off we go. Alright, first things first, I need my loaf for my banana bread. And my muffin tray. And I have another muffin tray here. Nothing should stick to that. Okay. I'm going to dump my bananas and get them all mixed up, minced up, pureed. It's going to be loud for a second. of unsalted butter.
to go and buy some more butter. Almost. All right. Now, sugar, but I don't like to use sugar in my banana bread or banana muffin. Instead, I use, oh, I'm almost out. It makes it warmer and nicer and you don't need as much sugar for the recipe so it's a bit healthier. So it asks for 150 grams of sugar or caster sugar and I'm just going to do half that, so 75 in maple syrup. Oh, I can get it open. There, there we go. And this is the Costco maple syrup. It is so good. It's very warm, kind of butterscotchy rather than the sugary stuff that we get in Australia. Alright, lid back on. I'm gonna mix up that. The butter, the bananas. Sticking up, there isn't. Good. And then we're going to want two eggs. I have eggs here. No, I'm going to need like all the eggs. So the whole thing's about is using up stuff before they go bad. Now, it asked for two large eggs, and I've only got small. I have large there, but that's only got small, so I'm going to do three small ones. Now, you don't have to put this in the mix, do it in a bowl. Just mash up the bananas with a fork instead. But why not? Right? There we go. These are my rubbish bowl. I really recommend having a rubbish bowl rather than having to go back to the bin every, you know, 30 seconds. shake. Make sure that you don't use too much baking soda or baking flour, uh, baking powder though. It makes it all taste horrific otherwise. Pinch of salt. And buttermilk. If I was 
smart, I would have got all the ingredients out beforehand, but honestly, I forgot what the ingredients were. There we go. I'm gonna mix that up one last time. spatula so they don't get broken up by the blades. I could put the blades on reverse but this is just how I want to do it. Alright, it's looking pretty good. I'm adding quite a few chocolate chips because I only put in half the amount of sugar with the maple syrup. Yep, looking great. Okay. Just remembered I have these as well, so I'm gonna use these as well. a bit easier to clean it later. And these are just from Kmart. They were $2, I think, for 12 So I have four dozen. That way, I could always make a couple dozen. All right, grab some more. They just go through the dishwasher. Uh, they do can discolor a little bit if you're doing like super dark stuff or anything with food coloring in it, but otherwise they're pretty good. I also have these, which I use for school lunches. So I cook little mini banana uh, bread loaves and that, and then all in a tray, and then they get just one of those in their school lunches. So that's all I've got right now. The rest must be in the wash in the dishwasher. All right. I like the ice cream scoop for doing this because it every scoop is exactly the right size. There's no going back and like coming back and topping things up later. It's just scoop it in and you're done. Alright, see if we have enough to go right around. Generally, if you're not me, it's less messy. like we might just not have enough to do all of these in one go. That's right, I'm gonna make another batch anyway for the loaf tin. 
and I still have we have dozen dozen bananas left. Lost my chunk. I'm about to wash my hands. But I'm cooking for my family, cooking with love, which means I like my fingers if it's gluten free, which this is. So the bananas were 69 cents a kilo. I used four bananas, which is probably. I don't know, 800 grams. So we'll say a kilo, 69 cents. Gluten-free flour is expensive, but you could use normal flour. The maple syrup, again, a little pricier than sugar, but you could just use sugar. I just prefer the flavor and that my kids aren't getting as much sugar because I mean, the bananas are sweet. The chocolate chips are sweet. And the maple syrup, gives it that desserty flavor. I haven't got quite enough for another one, so I'm just gonna top up some of these. It's quite a thick cake batter. So I've got a dozen, 18, and four. There are 22 muffins here. I'm gonna pop these in at 180 for about an hour. Well, an hour is for the low pin, so let's say 30 to 40. All right, those are in. Now, I'm gonna make another batch. I'll see you guys for the next thing. So I blitzed up six carrots and five onions into a fine sort of dice and that's going to go for all of my mince dishes. I've got 500 grams of the pork mince in this one and four, 500 grams of the pork mince in this one. This one's meatballs and this one is going to be sausage roll meat. Alright, I'm going to mix this in and then I'm going to come back with the herbs and spices. So I've added salt and pepper to this one, salt, pepper, and parsley to this one. Smoke paprika is going in both. Garlic powder is going in both. More in the uh, meatballs. And cumin and curry powder are going to go into the sausage rolls. So I've got sausage rolls freezing. There's one in the oven there for hubby for his dinner or lunch afternoon tea. I've got my pork meatballs here. They are cooked. They've got to cool down before I clean the tray, put a new piece of baking paper down, and then freeze them all individually and then bag them up. My banana and chopped chip muffins are done. And I overdid the bread a little bit, but it should be fine. And now I'm moving on to my beef mince to make burgers. I'm going to use my leftover egg in that 
as my binding agent because these are all gluten free. And then I'm going to use uh, pretty much the same stuff that was in the other. So garlic powder, smoked paprika, bit of cumin, bit of curry powder, bit of parsley, and that's pretty much, oh, and the onion and carrot will go in that. And then I'm gonna clean this kitchen. All right, I'll get back to you when they're done. All right, so burgers are done, quick and easy. I got four on the bottom layer and two here. I think I'm gonna make another lot just because this is one meal. So if I do another lot, then I can have this for dinner tonight and then have one in the freezer for later. So now I'm just working on the chili con carne. I've got 500 grams of mince. All of these recipes I used 500 grams of mince. I'm just browning that now, breaking it up. And then I'm gonna add the carrot and onion mix, and then capsicum, um, tin tomato, kidney beans. I put a little pot of rice on there. I don't usually put rice in my chili con carne, but I'm gonna put a little bit in to bulk it up so I can get maybe three meals out of it instead of two. And this is gonna be a freezer meal. So I'll be back. Yeah, so this is what I put into my chili con carne, taco seasoning, smoked paprika, coriander, garlic powder, and cumin. All right, so my chili's done. That's one can of diced tomatoes, 400 gram can, one red capsicum, one yellow and green capsicum, uh, maybe a cup, cup and a half of corn, one can of kidney beans, and the 500 grams of mince, the carrot and onion minced mixture, and the herbs and spices. My rice is also done, I'm about to add that into here, and we'll see how many meals we get out of it. All right, so this is all the mess I made doing all of this cooking. All right, and next up I'll show you all the food. All right guys, so here's the final haul. Two meals of chili con carne, these are 1.5 liter containers these will get frozen and microwaved because it's already cooked uh, 22 chocolate and banana muffins one chocolate chip and banana loaf one two three four five six seven big sausage rolls and one two three seven smaller sausage rolls and about 30 pork meatballs and this took me probably an hour and a half, two hours, but I sat and had lunch in the middle as well. All right, I'll catch you guys later.